does it right away so you can get the outtakes. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> is this okay? Tell me I'm pretty. You're pretty. I look like My <laughs> <laughs> It's been a long day. We just arrived. We arrived in Newfoundland yesterday. Nope. Wait for it till we're on mics to say that. Okay. Don't, Don't ask speak. me. I know, know just what you're thinking. thinking. It's, crazy. it's crazy. Do Dust? we need to close this window? Is it going to be bad sound? That's a really good question, Diane. Thank you for bringing it up. Say something into your mic. Something. Wait, ho. And a boom, 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 and a way, say, way, ho. Way, ho. Ba, na, 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 ba, ba. Ba, na, 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 ba. Ba, na, 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 ba, ba. Ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Tequila. Okay, sound check. I feel like the audio is going to be really good in here. I'm so excited. This is going to turn me on. Hi, my name's Michaela, and the audio in this room is going to turn Dharma on. So, um, if you all stay tuned, you might be able to hear her orgasm noise. It might happen. It might not. Tequila. Told you. Hot. Look at us. Look at us. Take a good, hard look. At us. At yourself. Hard my bangs are yourself. sweaty. Welcome to Not Your Mother's Book Club. Um, a smutty, funny podcast where we read erotic literature and just laugh our asses off. I'm Dharma. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm Michaela. <laughs> I think. We're here to bring you some orgasms on a silver platter. Ta -da! Tequila. Yeah, we're in St. Jan's. And we took some time out of our vacation to record this for you. Just for you. So you better f listen to it. And <laughs> you listen. Be it. You better like it. You better f like it. You better listen to this episode to the last f second. We had Towton's for the first time, um, and which is like a fried bread. And we had it with um, an Eggs Benedict on top. And it was absolutely outstanding. But for breakfast, I felt like I was a rolling piece of lard afterwards. I felt like roly poly -oly. Yeah. <laughs> it's roly poly -oly. He's short and fat and round. Woo. Tequila. Anyway, <laughs> we are filming in our Airbnb right now. If you're listening to us wherever you get your podcast, you can check us out on YouTube. We have a little video and you can see the first portion of the episode on YouTube. You can go check it out. And um, yeah, it's not haunted yet. But there was a huge fly in the room. We spent like half an hour, well, Michaela spent half an hour chasing it with her slide in yeah. her hand. I was like out an for Italian blood. nonna. But it was really, it kept hiding. I was like, how the f where are you hiding? Where are you hiding? You're a fly. It was huge. It was so big. It was like flying so slowly, yeah. but so fast at the same time. Yeah. Freaking flies. Freaking flies. So, anyway. <laughs> You want to hear the book? I would love to hear the book. I'm really excited. Okay. Let me preface this book. She's going to preface. I chose this book because one of our beloved DPs, which is our one of our distinguished patrons, those are people that pay us money for extra things. Pay us to, money. And to support us. Pay us money. Um, Actually, was like, love everything you do, but question why is there no lesbians on your podcast no lesbians and i was like listen you're so right we have not had a female loves female romance novel yet we've had gay we've had bisexual we've had threesomes we've had unicorns but we haven't had women yeah well and the thing is is that we didn't do any of this first season because it was covid and we wanted, when we explored these different genres of smut that we can't relate to, we wanted to have people on that could speak to it. We wanted to have people on the podcast that identify with these types of genres of smut, but we haven't been able to. And then for season two, we've both been doing contracts and traveling. So it's just been such a mess. So we're just going to have it. We're just going to read the smut. We're, we're just, just going to do, do it. it. And y'all can take our opinions with a grain of salt. Yeah, exactly. So that, the book I read this one, two cents. <laughs> yeah. I actually read this book like as myself as Dharma. I didn't read it for the podcast, but I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, 
And so I'm bringing it on because I had it. And I was like, DP, you are so right. I'm you gonna, are. I'm going to do it. I'm going to bring it on. Okay. So the book I have this week is called Delilah Green Doesn't Care. Okay. And it's two hot, sexy women on the front. And yeah. I'm obsessed with both of them. These ladies are beautiful. This woman, this woman in black with the tattoos. I'm not sure if I want to f her or if I want to be her. I love and this I, curvy woman. I know. Oh my god. Her hair is so pretty up in that little updo. I know. And her little cat eye glasses. Get out. And her beautiful breasts. They're both beautiful. And this Delilah Green is the one in black. And mm. she has big curly hair. This checks out. Yeah. That makes sense. With her big docks. I really like it. Yeah. And it's by Ashley Herring Blake. Ooh. It's new. Name. I think it came out. 2022 okay cool or end of last year i'm not sure but it is new we were actually just discussing how new erotic literature the covers are turning into this more like cutesy cartoony clean line type aesthetic and to be honest like my opinion i don't really like it mm -hmm. it looks like i'm reading like a children's book it looks like i'm reading something that will not have sex which Maybe that's the appeal. It doesn't look like a smutty novel. Yeah. But, like, I would look at this and run away from it. I'd be like, it's romance. I don't like it. It looks so boring. Yeah. It doesn't look sexy. Yeah. Although the ladies are very sexy. It looks like it's about two lesbians that are trying to figure it out. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't look at that and think, I want to pick this up. I picked it up because I was like, this is going to be a really cute rom-com. You know, like, this is going to be a really cute romance novel. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some sexual tension. Maybe there'll be, like, one, max two sex scenes, mm -hmm. which there is. There's, I think there's only, like, two sex scenes. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is, like, a romance novel. It's not erotica yeah. or smut. We were talking about how there are different subgenres of the, like... Of romance. Of romance world. And there is, like, romance, erotica, and smut. And it's three different things. Do you want to enlighten our listeners? Yes. Listen up, children. Grab your pencils and papers. There's going to be a test. Romance is exactly what you think it is. It's two people falling in love. And sometimes that might be, there might be sex in that. And most of the time these days, there usually is one or two sex scenes in a romance novel. But it's not about like external forces. It's about them falling in love with each other. It's like, seriously just two people falling in love erotica i would say has a huge emphasis on the sex and a lot of times erotica can be romantic but it's not romance like take for example priest like that's erotica and i also think i also classify myself um erotica as something that uses sex as a literary tool to like get a point across or to explore certain viewpoints or life philosophies because when you look at erotica that was written like the first forms of erotica like you have bear there's not like an explicit sex scene in it but it's like a woman who has sex with a bear and like the, it's so sex is used as a literary tool mm. to explore the relationship between nature and man and woman bestiality yeah so that's what I would classify as erotica. It's using sex as a tool to explore relationships. And then there's smut, which is literally just you're reading it because it's hot and sexy. And that those are like the dime store ones. You know, like most of the time I would consider smut like badly written. Or if it's not like extremely romantic, but there's a lot of sex in it and there's no viewpoint. There's no point to the book, mm -hmm. you it's know? It's just fluff. It's just straight fluff yeah. with lots of sex. That's smut. I would say romance and erotica are the more substantial. Like there's a there's a place for ev each of these. Mm -hmm. Like I love a good smut. Like if I'm depressed, I'm reading smut all the way. If I'm sad and lonely, I'm reading romance. Mm -hmm. And if I'm like, I need some substance, but I'm also not gonna read Lord of the Rings, I'm gonna read erotica. I think that for me, I really only like reading erotica mm -hmm. because I like the focus on the sex. I'm not a romance book reader, mm -hmm. so that does not appeal to me where it's like there's one sex scene. Like, no. Even when I read erotica, sometimes I, I flip through the dialogue mm. or I don't read the descripting words. I only read the dialogue and then that leads into the sex. Mm. 
I'm very much like a skimmer yeah until it gets to the sex so like the romance part of it doesn't matter so much for me I want like the action but I like to read Stephen King mostly so I'm just a different breed of reader yeah exactly but anyways that's your lesson for the day hope you all enjoyed there will be a pop quiz pop quiz this is what we're reading delilah green doesn't care it's doesn't such a cute care. cover and i'm gonna read you the back delilah green swore she would never go back to bright falls nothing is there for her but memories of a lonely childhood in which she was little more than a burden to her cold and distant step family dark and twisted past dark and twisted past her life is in new york with her photography career finally gaining steam and her bed never empty oh Sure, there's a different woman in it every night, but that's just fine with her. When Delilah's estranged stepsister, Astrid, pressures her into photographing her wedding with a guilt trip and a five-figure check, Delilah finds herself back in the godforsaken town that she used to call home. She plans to breeze in and out, but then she sees Claire Sutherland, one of Astrid's stuck-up besties, oh. and decides that maybe there's some fun and a little retribution to be had in Bright Falls after all. Having raised her 11-year-old daughter mostly on her own while dealing with her unreliable ex and running a bookstore, Claire Sutherland depends upon a life without surprises. She looks like she owns a bookstore. Look at this woman. This checks out. She's so hot. She's like, get out. so hot. The other one is like conventionally like mainstream tattoos, wears all black. Like, yeah. sure. Yes, hot. But she's like... She's a... <sighs> She's a vixen. You know what she, who she reminds me of? That um, very curvy, redhead woman oh. that is in like Mad Men or Suits or like one of, not Suits, oh. Mad Men. Who's that actress? She's so hot. Do you know who I'm talking about? I think so. It's this dress too. It's the it's dress. It's vintage. It's everything. And Delilah Green is an unwelcome surprise at first. Though they've known each other for years, they don't really know each other. So Claire is unsettled when Delilah figures out exactly what buttons to push. When they're forced together during the gauntlet of wedding preparations, including a plot to save Astrid from her horrible fiance, Claire isn't sure that she has the strength to resist Delilah's charms. Even worse, she's starting to think she doesn't want to. Even worse, Even no girl, go worse. for it. So here's the lowdown. It's very romantic. Yes, romance. So Delilah Green, Yes. Her dad married this woman. It's very like Cinderella vibes. Like he married this very rich kind of like frou-frou woman who came with a daughter, Astrid. Mm -hmm. Delilah and Astrid did not get along. And like same with Delilah and her stepmom. And then when Delilah's dad dies, she has to be taken care of by her stepmom and her stepsister who don't really care about her. Very Cinderella story. So Delilah is like very standoffish when she's growing up, like has zero relationship with these people, mm -hmm. especially Astrid's best friends, Claire. And there's another one, I forget her name. They kind of always like made fun of her. Yeah. So Delilah moves away, is like a budding photographer in New York, um, never wants to come back to her hometown. But then Astrid is like, listen, I'm getting married and I'm gonna pay you a lot of money if you come and take photos. And she's like, I can't refuse this. I can't okay, refuse girl. this check. Yeah. So she goes. First day she arrives with her suitcase, goes to the bar. As you do. Yeah. Claire is at the bar with the other best friend. Mm. And the other best friend's like, you need to let, get laid, girl. Like, go up to that hot woman who just came up to the bar and go ask for her number. And so Claire's like, okay, I can do this. So she goes up to Delilah, doesn't recognize her. Mm hmm and is like, you're really hot, like flirting with her. Mm. And then Delilah, as soon as Claire comes up, is like recognizes her. Oh, okay. And is like, yeah. she really doesn't recognize me. She's like, F you. Yeah, tick against her. Mm. Astrid's husband is a prick and a half. As he should be. That prick and sense. a half. Prick and yeah. a half. So Claire and the other best friend are like, we need to save her. Even Delilah's like, Astrid sucks, but like, she doesn't deserve that. Mm. So they're like trying to make Astrid see how sh he is. Mm -hmm. Or they're trying to break them up pretty much. So that's pretty much what this is. They like end up going to a, um, Claire has a daughter um, and her ex is like a flaky teenage man pretty much. Mm. You know, he's a man child. They go 
with Astrid to the like I think it's like a spa day they go like sleep over at a spa um but there wasn't a fourth room for Delilah so Delilah and Claire have to share oh and then they of like course. and then they start making out and hooking up but then they get interrupted mm -hmm. so then there's that and then once they're back in town they're both kind of like what do we do now like they're both like how's mm -hmm. the other person going to react Claire invites Delilah on an excursion with um her and her daughter mm -hmm. I think just like as a friend mm -hmm. and then they end up back at Claire's house and they're like laughing they're having a good time they're like doing tarot cards and it's of like course. kind of fun and flirty and that's where we are okay great yeah how far into the book is this like half half yeah halfway okay great I like that in this brief description, all of the men that were brought up are like swine. Disgusting. I love that. Yeah, it's okay. Lesbian wrote this. She said, <laughs> men. Does this author only write lesbian smut? I think she will, because I think the next book is about Astrid. Mm. Yeah. And I, like, from what I saw, it was, um... This is so exciting because it's our first little girl on girl action. I know, right? Woot, 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 woot. You can listen to the rest of this episode anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, and you should follow us on Instagram at notmothersbookclub. You can also send us an email with your home written erotica to notmothersbookclub at gmail.com. And you should also follow us on TikTok because we make some really stupid little ticky talkies that will just make your little day. Um, and that's not your mother's book club. You can find us. So we're going to go read this lesbian schmutz. And if you would like to join us, which you just should, you can go listen to the rest of this. Have a great, I don't know, a life. Have a life. Go live a life. <laughs> go do something with your life. Be protective. Use protection. Do your laundry. That's it. <laughs>